Hey folks, so this bit is uh, the bit I wanted to talk on about on Trading Pub yesterday, but I didn't have time to. Um, and it's basically a little segment on risk appetite, risk capacity, and I guess the, the crypto portfolios or actions one should deploy based on your current situation. So obviously I've had to take out my big black tar brush here and just like stereotype and pigeonhole um, as much as I can, but I'm only doing this just, you know, just to make a point, not to make an offence, you know, not to offend people, if that makes sense. So, um, I, I've basically, broadly speaking, I think most people could uh, categorise themselves into um, these sort of genres. Um, on the left, we have, you know, no kids, and on the right, we have kids, and that is a big difference when it when it comes to sort of the, the capacity of risk, etc. But essentially we have jobless or no income um, and then the income goes up incrementally. Uh, but there's also um, a little split here because there are there is a little difference between biz owners and uh, those with pay, like a, a constant predictable salary. So first of all, your, your capacity for risk. So I would say, and this is all my opinion, obviously, uh, for risk. Um, if you have kids, it is a lot harder to um, do as well as fast as someone that doesn't have kids. So, for example, when I was broke 12 years ago or, or whatnot, it was just myself and Ellie living in the tiniest of a bungalows, literally. I'd say this office right now is probably 50% the size of the bungalow we used to live in. Um, <laughs> uh, to the point where our bedrooms, we, we could only open the door like that much because it would hit our uh, mattress. And we'd ha both have to stand on top of the mattress to get change every day. Um, like, it was, yeah. So, obviously we're not starving, but, you know, I was struggling to decide whether to buy cheese or mayonnaise because we couldn't afford both. So, you know, when we were broke, we had no kids. You know, Ellie had a, a low-paying job. I had no job <laughs> for uh, at one point and then had three jobs. So, but because we didn't have kids and we, we had flexibility, I could take on all of those risks that I did. Um, and when I say risks, not, not so much risks. Oh, yeah, I did take some risks. Um, but I busted a gut and I, I could literally do three jobs at once, which is what I did. And then two jobs with a part-time business, then one job with a part-time business, then no job with hope you know with that business which I was growing so but if I had kids if we had kids hell no I couldn't have done that so this has just made me realize that you know if you have kids it is going to be slightly harder for you um, <clears throat> so just just bear that in mind and and also it's, it's more of a time commitment so the, the the thing that that actually causes is less time um, and if you have less time, you can be, you know, you have less time to, you know, do shit. So the, <clears throat> and also you have less money. <laughs> um, you definitely have less money. So you have, you know, less resources, less time, but don't use that as an excuse. Um, that's just victim mentality. You can still do very, very well. Um, so also the appetite for risk, you'll probably most likely have less appetite for risk. Um, because you you have all sorts of appetite, um, existential sort of mental crises. You're like, oh my god, what happens if I die? All that sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, I'm not giving you you know like a hall pass or, or whatnot. If you have kids and you, and you do want to you know do something you know and get more money, um, you can still do it. You just got to prioritize a lot better. Um, don't fall for that victim mentality. Oh, I don't have enough time. That's bollocks. I've got what seven businesses I'm running two court <laughs> two court cases. I'm trading full time. I've got kids um, and all sorts of other bits and bobs I do. But the it's all about prioritization. And when you prioritize, stuff falls off the plate. Which is why you know I you you may end up in the situation where you have four things where you have is that whole. Um, uh, urgent and important <clears throat> uh, I, I won't bother typing it you basically have urgent important important but not urgent unimportant 
urgent and unimportant and not urgent. Uh, and basically, when you prioritize and you, you are juggling too many things, the only thing that you literally have the capacity to deal with is urgent and important. And you just have to ignore everything else. And eventually, if it's important enough, it'll then become urgent. <laughs> Don't do that with your taxes, though. So, <clears throat> the yeah, I guess what I was trying to say is that if you have no kids, um, it's going to be slightly easier. Now, the, the, the bands, in terms of, you know, setting up a new business or going full-time trading or, or, or whatnot, um, I would actually say, it, like, let, okay, okay, ignore this side, ignore the kids and no kids. Let's just now focus um, on the actual sort of bands of, you know, whether, you know, jobless, low, you know, low paying upwards, etc. So the the thing is, it's actually relatively easy to set up a part time business, etc. and do some sort of side hustle or trading, etc. If you have a job, okay. Um, so if you're in sort of this sector over here, it's relatively easy because you can you got oodles of time, so much time, like you only go into the, your to work from like nine till six. Um, or nine to five or whatever but you know like no matter who you are you still have at least at least five hours a night to to, to do something you know learn a new skill watch some videos to learn a new skill uh, actually in, implement stuff so you know there, there's plenty pl pl five plus hours um, so that's that however if you are, yeah, so that's fine for those, you know, doing a business, wanting to do business or trading. Now, when it comes to business owners, it's a bit different. Like, there's that old saying that um, it's great being a business owner. I get to choose which 18 hours of the day I get to work. Um, <laughs> and and that's so true. When you're, you're first starting out, especially if you're this one and this one, you will most likely be doing, you know, crazy hours, you know, 12, 15 hours a day, all that sort of stuff. Um, and so that, and that's by the way, really good because business, it should be your primary wealth generation uh, vehicle. It should be. Um, so, and rem remember trading and investing is an amplifier of your capital. Business should be your primary income generating and wealth generating business um, activity or vehicle. So, you, the, da, 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 da. yeah, so for these people, trading is going to be really hard because you, you're you going to be so stressed out running um, your business and not much time, etc. And especially if you have kids, it's going to be even harder. So you won't, you literally won't have time um, or you'll be too mentally fatigued to, to really give trading a, a shot or not. So especially for those, you know, nano business owners that are just starting out over here with, you know, less than 50K a year profit. Um, I guess 50 to 250K uh, earnings before interest and tax or DAR if you if you have that, that type of business, depreciation, amortization. Um, the, you, you most likely have a bit more time, but um, yeah, and then I guess 250K onwards, you, you can have loads of time. Um, typically because you'll have you know staff all that sort of stuff so I guess it's you know it's it's easier to get on your trading journey in this sort of sector not so much this sector but and a lot easier on on this sector so so with, with all, all that in mind what sort of profiles your crypto activities could you do so um, I if you were to do this so we have um, risk. Now let's do reward over here. Oh, sorry, reward and risk. So over here, obviously, we're gonna have you know, like um, BRC twenty, you know, type stuff. You know, super high risk, high reward, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, so let's just say like BRC twenty type stuff. You know, NFTs, all that sort of shizzle. And then down here, lowest risk, lowest reward, we've got Bitcoin, right? So they're, they're the extremes of risk to reward when it comes to crypto. Now, what sort of profile or, or portfolio should you deploy? And again, this all comes back down to who you are. What, what are your, whoopsie daisy, uh, what are your circumstances? Um, 
uh, and obviously you can only answer that and hopefully this video helps to get a bit more clarity on it because the type of crypto portfolio you you deploy you know that that time factor is a, is a really important thing um, so for me you know because it's what I do etc I'm more than happy to you know to, to play in this sector over here um, and like anything I think you should actually deploy a bit of a blended portfolio so for, for years I've always uh, recommended uh, the Kryptonian portfolio so I've just found some old uh, slides from something I did I don't know back in 2018 so this just gives you an idea of how um, my Kryptonian portfolio hasn't really changed too much I'll just quickly run through this um, oh, can we swap screens uh, display settings swap there we go so the Kryptonian portfolio historically I mean it's always tweaked and you know it's always um, changed a little bit but the the overall consensus is, is still somewhat the same and and you can tweak uh, to your own accord but I've always said having something like 30% hodlers and hodlers are good blue chip cryptos 30% cash flows now this is during you know 2017 2018 so obviously <coughs> we had lots of lovely staking uh, cryptos you know especially in a bull market staking is absolutely beautiful um, so cash flows uh, and then that turned into you know rebasing DAOs, all that sort of stuff. Smart, smart Tracker, 20%. So that's where you're basically becoming your own index. So you're buy, buying the top coin or two of every sector, from gaming to AI to uh, DEXs to wh whatever. 10% aggressive cryptoing. So that will be your trading, but obviously a bit more aggressive. Um, Oh yeah, aggressive crypto. Sorry, it, that's playing. So that's playing with smaller, mi um, sort of micro cap uh, crypto. So you're looking at you know under a hundred million market cap, and then hopefully they they 10x or 50x or whatever. Five percent aggressive trading. So that's the buy bit type stuff, but obviously uh, using more than say 0.1 percent max risk. The reason I'm doing 0.1 percent max risk right now. Um, is because we're in a, a, a weird period where we don't really know the real market condition. There's no clear trend. We're like, are we at the end of the bear market? Are we at the beginning of the bull market? It's that weird sort of transition. So we, we've got to stay low. But as we um, get more and more confirmations that we are in a bull market, I will be inc dramatically increasing the risk of my trades. Um, so, well, yeah. And I say dramatically, I mean that from a percentage point of view. So going from 0.1% max risk to 1% max risk, that from a percentage point of view is a dramatic increase. But I'm not going to be doing like 50% max risk per trade or, or whatever. And then, you know, 5% Bitcoin pension because, you know, you don't want to be that person who doesn't have any Bitcoin. You should really w value your wealth in the amount of Bitcoin you have and ignore the dollar or pound price of that Bitcoin. Your, your goal should always be just to stack those sats. Um, so, I mean, this is back in the day. I'm, don't, do not look at these. I'm, I'm just curious to see what they say. So, ADA Ethos. Jeez, Ethos. I haven't heard that for a while. Um, what did I have? Neo, Vet, Ontology, Masternodes. Ugh. I actually didn't touch Masternodes. Um, Smart Tracker, yeah. So, basically having a a bunch of all sorts of different um, sectors, uh, aggressive cryptoing. Yeah, so I think yeah, I've basically just e explained all of this just because. Yeah, so that's you know like a six-year-old presentation, still somewhat valid. So where does that put us on this risk to reward thing? So if you were to have the Kryptonian portfolio, I, I've designed it so it's sort of automatically a. It straddles that line. Um, Kryptonian. Let's just go call it the port portfolio. So that basically covers everything because you you do have you know five percent just in the Bitcoin and you are going up and doing some what of the, more the aggressive stuff. Now the Kryptonian portfolio is good for you know if if you're semi active because there's a, a a trading element there, isn't there? Um, but if you're really not active and you're, you know, I mean, for the average Joe, what I say to everyone is literally just like, if you really have zero time for this, just buy Bitcoin and ETH, park it in a wallet out of a sex, as in centralized exchange, and just come back in five years time and pat yourself on the back. 
that is the most like stress-free thing you could do with crypto and then you can ignore all the price fluctuations um, etc if you want to be slightly more active um, I guess you can you know, you, you got the you know the tracker thing. You could just do the tracker. Literally, just pick ten coins. The, you know, the top. The, yeah, the top one. Co yeah, the top coin in the you know the the main sectors. You know, a layer one, layer two, um, AI. You know, things that could be quite well uh, do well. Like a Dex, all that sort of stuff. So, smart tracker, and then just sit on it again for five years and come back and. Or come back in late 2020 and sell, <laughs> um, and then obviously yeah, it, it goes on. So I just wanted to put a bit of context. We, you know, just I, I see people doing things incongruent to the, their, you know, their risk appetite, capacity, resources, time, all that sort of shizzle. So yeah, hope it helps, and I'll see you soon. Bye.